Well, what's up guys? It's Daniel and uh, Earl from Arms Family Homestead and a little bit of Bella too. Get down, Earl. Get down. Get down. Go on. This is what happens when you talk to the camera around dogs. Uh, anyways, we're out at Houston's little fish pond today. He's at school. It's just me, well, and my lovely assistants here. Um, anyways, you guys have seen by now probably several clips of the, the ducks and goose playing in Houston's fish pond. I did a live stream on YouTube the other day on uh, Sunday morning and probably had six, seven hundred people watching a live stream of them just playing in the water. Earl, you need to stop. And then I did another live stream on Facebook and had, I don't know, four or five hundred people watching for an hour of just the ducks and goose playing in the water. And everyone has had nine billion questions about are they going to ruin Houston's fish pond? Are they going to kill the fish? Are they going to eat all the fish? And I'm going to do a little a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of maintenance, and uh, kind of talk to you about that and tell you what I think. I'm not an expert. Um, this, for those of you that don't know, this little fish pond was built by Team Aquascape. Aquascapes Inc. Greg Whitstock, the pond guy, came in, had his guys build Houston this awesome fish pond. And it all started with his stock tank fish pond a couple of years ago. And then last summer, they came in and built this. And it's been... It's been interesting learning how to take care of it, how to maintain it, and trying to keep the leaves out of it. Um, as you can see, it's surrounded by trees and leaves are the biggest headache with this little pond, but it's not in perfect condition right now, but I don't think the geese or the goose and the ducks have really caused any significant problems yet. So I wanna do a little cleaning, try to get some of the leaves out. Uh, we usually just come in with a, a little dip net and dip all the leaves out. I don't know, every few days. But our net uh, is not in good shape. I ordered a new one. Just haven't got it here yet. But uh, anyways, now before you get on to me for doing this and not making Houston do everything, let me say one of his chores all fall and winter has been to come out here and scoop as many leaves out, clean out the, uh, the little... Uh, skimmer box there of leaves and all that stuff he helps me take care of this thing but the reality is he's a 10 year old kid and he really is limited in what he knows to do here and we've tried to keep as many leaves out as we can but as you'll see i may put the gopro underwater and see if we can find any of the fish but you'll see there's a lot of leaves and we've got some algae build up in here right now but uh we're going to start working on that situation pretty soon see if we can get all that under control but is it hard to maintain this pond is there a lot of work that goes into it is a question that people are going to ask and really honestly the answer is no it's uh very simple to take care of why are you dogs eating that bird feed over there um the way this is built it's all it has one big liner underneath and then all the rocks are stacked on the liner there is a basin over here that is like a, I'm gonna compare it to a skimmer box on a swimming pool. So when you raise this up, you can see the water goes in this skimmer box and that's what pulls all the leaves in. So if I close the water off, you'll see how many leaves this, this gathers up on its own. So it creates a, a natural movement, that waterfall push the leaves across and they come into the skimmer box. So every, you know, couple days, this time of year, you just have to come in here and pull this out and dump the leaves. Then underneath that skimmer box is, I'm gonna call it a pre-filter. So just a, just a, a uh, filter pad I've taken it out and cleaned it a few times but not much and then underneath that is a submersible pump so let me put this back in place open the water up so when the pump is pulling that water in it all sucks into the bottom of that basin and then they buried pipe underneath 
up to what they call a bio falls. Let's walk up there. So the water's pumped from the bottom, the lowest point, up to this bio falls, and there are two, two or three big filter pads in there that filter everything. So the water is constantly circulating, and it's kind of made to look like a natural spring. So it bubbles up there, comes to our first waterfall, and yes, we do have a lot of, a lot of algae, string algae, moss, whatever you want to call it, growing right now, but. Like I said, this is this thing has been on autopilot pretty much all fall and winter. We haven't really done anything except scoop some leaves out. So the water is a closed, continuous loop. It goes it goes in the pump, up through the filter, just constantly all day, every day. And I can control how much flow is coming off the waterfall, how much basically how much water is being pumped. And I usually leave it turned down on like three or four of ten setting unless we're outside hanging out then I turn it up hey, they're out Earl you sure want some attention today you know that so like I said I'm not an expert but basically that biofalls has has media in there that collects all of the 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 dirty parts I guess if a like say um, fish poop or duck poop or whatever and that biofalls builds its own life um, ecosystem in there that breaks down the, the ammonia and things. And then the next part in keeping the water clean is the automatic dosing system. Now this was buried until we had to dig everything up and set our post for the patio. And I just haven't put it back in the ground. So this has a chemical inside of it in a little pouch. This chemical inside this little pouch automatically doses um, a certain amount of chemical which it's empty right now and that's probably part of the reason that we have a lot of green algae growing is I ordered some more of these because I didn't realize I was completely out forgot about it for about a month and anyways so this is called maintain for ponds it automatically doses with uh, the chemicals we need to keep basically everything just in alignment with the water system or the water quality I guess you'd say so there's really very little maintenance that goes into this. Now, water quality right now is not the best. I mean, it's a little bit dirty, but this girl gets in there four or five times a day and the ducks and the goose, the ducks and goose were in here all morning long and it's, uh, it's noon. So obviously it takes a little while for, you know, the water to settle back down, but the main thing is I need to get more of that that uh, chemical in the automatic doser to get rid of some of this algae that's growing in there and uh, just keep the water healthy. But, I mean, really, honestly, it looks very natural. I don't mind a little bit of algae on those rocks because, to me, that looks like it's real in nature. So the automatic dosing system takes that chemical and we buried a tube and it goes under into the pump box here and it just automatically drips a pre-set amount of that chemical into there.
Now, as I said, this pond has been here since June of last summer. So we're still learning. This is our first winter with the pond. And like I said, there's really very little upkeep and maintenance other than trying to keep the leaves under control. And there are a lot of leaves in the bottom of the pond right now. We'll have to take care of that. And that, the, those leaves from these oak trees release tannins into the water, which is going to stain the water. So could the water quality be better? Absolutely. Is it stained and dirty looking right now because of the ducks and geese? I don't think so. Are they pooping in there? Yes. But they just recently found the pond. Like I said, it was put here in June and the ducks and goose found it about a week, maybe a week and a half ago. And they usually come up here in the mornings, sometimes for 30 minutes, sometimes for two hours. Um, but, you know, we have the bird feeders out here and stuff, so they come up and eat the bird feed take a bath, do their business, and go on. One thing I am concerned about as spring approaches and we start getting plants back here is what are we gonna be able to keep here that the ducks and goose aren't gonna destroy? Um, that's gonna be tricky when it comes to flowers. So we'll have to figure that part out. But I'm really not concerned about them coming up here just yet. They're not messing up the patio or dirtying up the uh, outdoor kitchen or anything like that yet. Um, I've I understand ducks and geese. I know <laughs> they can be a headache and a problem. So far they're not. Next is the fish. Everyone's worried about the fish. So there are three goldfish in here that Houston got from our old friend Jesse Oxley. They were in his original fish tank for a couple years, I guess. And then three butterfly koi. And they're all six to eight inches long. They're too big, even if ducks and geese were to eat fish, they're too big. Um, the only thing that these ducks and goose could eat if they chose to would be tiny little minnows and we don't have those. But for the most part, ducks are, they're here for the vegetation. They're here for what's in there. They, they're filter feeders. So they're eating small stuff and filtering, you know, they, they go down and they grab a bite and they spit out, you know, in a pond, in a real pond, they'd spit out the mud and keep all the little small crustaceans and small things. Um, they're not out here trying to eat fish that are this big. So I'm not too concerned about the fish. We do still see them quite often. They're not out right now. I got the GoPro out and tried to find them. But the way that Brian and the guys from Aquascapes built this pond, um, there's so many holes and crannies and crevices in between rocks for the fish to get into and hide that like right now the water temperature is like 48 degrees and it's been as low as the mid 30s. And when it's that cold, the fish just don't come out much. We'll see them late in the evenings when the sun, when it's full sun on the pond. You know, these days where it's been 65, 70 degrees, we'll see them for a little bit. But you can feed them and they really don't come out to eat. They're just kind of in dormant hibernation almost. So I'm not too concerned about the fish. And as far as the ducks go, they're welcome here right now. Until they start causing a real problem and being a, uh, a pain in the butt like ducks can be, I've enjoyed watching them come up to the patio and watching them come up to the pond. Uh, I don't want them on the patio and outdoor kitchen because they will make a mess. But uh, the next thing is those live streams. So many people have really enjoyed those live streams. I don't want to just do just be a live stream channel by any means, but I've thought about looking into some sort of camera setup that I could get out here, check in and see whenever I wanted to and be able to go live for you guys. Because right now I've just been using my cell phone because it's really close to the house. I've got Wi-Fi service. If you have any ideas on what kind of camera I could set out here that I could live stream through social media with would be cool because those Sunday mornings when we're not, you know, we're getting ready for church or whatever and people seem to really enjoy just sitting there and watching the ducks play in the water. So um, I've thought about doing some live streams like at the barn and stuff. We're trying to figure out internet service down there. How cool would it be to set up a camera in one of DJ's stalls when she has a, don a donkey that's gonna give birth, you know, and just put a live stream up there and leave it so you guys can watch that. And, you know, I remember a couple of years ago, there was a channel that did that, um, like a, a learning channel or something, did it with a, a giraffe. And there were millions of people around the world waiting on this baby giraffe to be born and then everybody got to watch it and it was really cool. So, um, I don't know, we'll see. So, that's all for the pond, I think I'm gonna Go uh, fill up some deer feeders and do a couple chores. We'll bring you guys along. Um, 
So anyways, if you have tips on the live stream idea, let me know in the comment section. So the front windshield hasn't uh, came in for our, our new Can-Am Defender. When we bought this thing, I had the dealership work out a deal to put a front windshield on it because you, you don't want to ride around in side by side the winter time without some sort of front windshield. But uh, like anything else, it was on back order and they didn't have it in stock, so we're still waiting on that, but we'll get it soon enough. Coming, Gemma. Watch this. Gotta go, Gemma. Let's go. She's hunting. She's like, Dad, I don't want to go. Come on. Guys, excuse the wind noise today. I'm still waiting on my adapter for my wireless microphones to come in. But uh, deer season's not over yet. It is down to the wire. January 15th is the last day of archery season. And Houston and I have done some bow hunting with his crossbow. But no video because obviously we haven't been successful yet. But Mr. Limpy Gimpy disappeared for about two weeks. And then he started slipping up. And he's been in the field where we saw him during rifle season multiple times. Too far from the blind to shoot with the crossbow. But uh, we're going to move some things around, change some things up for the last weekend of archery season. And see if we can get Limpy within about 40 yards for Houston. Gemma, let's go. Come on. Let's go. Get on. Hey, come on. Gemma. I'm gonna leave without you. Let's go. Come on. Load up. Gemma. I heard you get on. Come on. Gemma. Come on. Come on. There you are. <laughs> bunch of wild ducks there's still a few on the pond most of them flew off Well, that's going to wrap it up for today. I hope that answered some questions about the ducks and the goose situation in the pond. Uh, Aquascape's water features are built to handle way more than just 
your standard backyard koi pond. They overbuild the filtration system on those things. So I think it'll be okay. If not, we'll reach out to Greg and see what we can do to make it better. Because I've been to Greg's personal, what what's it called? Uh, the big place at Aquascapes Corporation that Houston and DJ and I went to. Aqualand, that's what it's called, Aqualand. They've got a giant water feature there and there'll be 15, 20 ducks and geese and all kinds of stuff, hundreds of fish and tons of koi, all kinds of stuff. And uh, it's a natural, it's, it's built to mimic nature, let's say that. So it can handle it and uh, if not, we'll figure it out. And as far as Limpy Gimpy goes, he is still on the hit list. Houston has asked every day this week if I'd come get him early from school and take him hunting, if he could skip school and go hunting. Um, but we're trying to get Limpy Gimpy on a good solid pattern, sneak in there and make it happen. We've been practicing with the crossbow. I think Houston can do it. So anyways, guys, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video. Killed Lampy Gimpy. Oh my gosh.